A common topic that chemical engineers learn about uh, in undergraduate courses is fluid mechanics. And one of the important themes in fluid mechanics is this idea of flux. And we can have different types of flux. We can have mass flux and heat flux. And in this example, I will be discussing how we can have flow over a flat plate that incorporates a coupled mass and heat flux. And to illustrate what's going on, we'll have some kind of flat plate like this, and we will have some kind of fan blowing air over our flat plate with some bulk velocity, uh, I'll call it V. And uh, what happens is as a fluid flows over a flat plate, we develop things called boundary layers. And there are different kinds of boundary layers. We have uh, concentration boundary layers as well as um, thermal boundary layers and uh, to give an idea of what a typical boundary layer will look like we'll have something that kind of uh, <clears throat> as we um, move along this axis which I will define as x uh, it will be proportional to so typically we use the symbol delta to define boundary layer thicknesses delta is proportional to uh, velocity to the one half power. I'm sorry, minus one half power. And so what this means is that we have an inverse relationship to velocity. And as we flow uh, fluid faster over a flat plate, our boundary layer thicknesses will decrease. And uh, what we can do in labs to study how this uh, affects our systems is um, by examining rates of mass transfer. And uh, what I'll do is I'll kind of give an idea of an experimental setup we can have in lab and how uh, we can uh, model and uh, evaluate what a boundary layer thickness would be as well as an overall mass transfer coefficient um, in practice. And uh, so what we'll do is in this example I have drawn, we'll heat this air up to some value T or T air. And uh, I will assume our bulk fluid so the bulk fluid is everything that's over our flat plate but not inside of our boundary layer that will be well mixed and it will have some constant temperature and some constant concentration of uh, if our flat plate contained water uh, we'll say it contains water and if we placed a uh, analytical mass balance on our tray of water, what we'll notice is we'll have uh, water evaporating into the bulk stream of air um, over time. And so I will uh, see if I can just draw some kind of something to symbolize that we've got uh, an analytical balance that's measuring this mass as the uh, water evaporates. And uh, it also evaporates um, so it gets a little bit tricky. We'll assume our uh, bulk fluid uh, is uh, well mixed uh, along uh, all dimensions. And um, so what we'll do now is step one, determine flux. And as we'll recall, flux is equivalent to a quantity per area per time. In this case, we will have, because we'll know a reading of mass over time, we'll know uh, dm dt, the rate of mass change per time. And if we divide that by the area of the tray, we now know the flux, which is Na, um, and that's of water. Now, with this uh, quantity, because we were able to make an assumption that uh, or because we were able to look up the tabulated values of the heat of vaporization of water as well as the thermal conductivity of air, we can evaluate what the temperature profile of air must be by coupling it into an uh, energy balance. And so what this energy balance is, is it says that the flux of water times the heat of vaporization of water must be equivalent to the thermal conductivity of air times dt dz. And so intuitively what this equation is telling us is that the energy that is uh, flowing from our 
bulk fluid into the water must be equivalent to the energy that is required to evaporate a given mass of water that we just evaluated previously. And so we will solve for dt dz. And just so I get these axis, axes uh, correct, z plus will be um, heading above our tray. And so now that we know what the temperature profile is along the z-axis, because we'll know delta H vaporization, we'll know heat, uh, the con thermal conductivity of air, assuming we have air as our bulk fluid, and we know the mass, we can pretty easily evaluate dt dz. So now that we know what our temperature profile is along the z-axis of our system, the next thing we're going to want to find is the concentration profile along the z-axis. And to do that, we're going to first turn to Antoine's equation. And uh, for those of us who have taken thermodynamic courses, Antoine's equation is something that allows us to relate and evaluate what the uh, molar fraction is um, of a given species at a particular uh, saturation pressure. And so what this tells us um, and Antoine's equation has coefficients a, b, and c. These coefficients vary depending on what fluids uh, you are working with in your given system, but for the case of water evaporating into air at these given conditions, what we see is that the mole fraction of water is equivalent to the exponent of 18.3 minus, and then Again, these are numbers that uh, are specific to your system, and you will look up on your own. 46.13. We're going to divide this quantity by 760 times the total pressure of our system. And this will be pressure in APM, and this temperature here will have units of Kelvin. And so at this point, uh, determining the correct temperature value to plug in, because we are interested in the mole fraction of water evaluated at the interface, the temperature value that we will use will be uh, T of the air, not T of the water. And uh, given this value, we now know what uh, the mole fraction of water is just above our pan. So I will uh, come back to the drawing we have here. What we've just found is just above the water, this value has some mole fraction xA evaluated at naught, or z equals zero. We will now turn back to an energy balance. Now that we know the mole fraction of water just above our interface, to derive what our change in concentration of water in the z direction is in our system following this relationship. So we will have uh, minus the diffusivity or diffusion coefficient of water into air, which is a tabulated value, times 1 minus the mole fraction, xA naught, uh, and then just for clarity, xA naught is equivalent to xA evaluated at z equals 0. Uh, this term times the concentration profile of water in the z direction in our system must be equivalent to the thermal conductivity of air divided by the heat of vaporization of water times dt dz. We know what the heat of uh, vaporization is for water. We know all these quantities on the right hand side uh, and then we just evaluated uh, xA naught, so we can now solve this for dCA, sorry, dCA dz. And so now that we know the concentration profile of water in our z direction, as well as the temperature uh, profile in the z direction, our next step is to find what the uh, concentration of water is just above the interface as well as inside the bulk of our fluid. And so to do this, 
So the goal is to get CA bulk and CA surface, or we'll call it CA naught for the uh, sake of consistency, uh, CA naught. And what we'll do to evaluate this quantity, uh, to evaluate these quantities, um, CA bulk, what we'll assume is we will uh, let our air be an ideal gas which will allow us to turn to the ideal gas law, PV is equal to nRT. And uh, if we break this down into the uh, partial pressures and concentrations, what we'll notice is that uh, N over V is equal to the partial pressure. So. Uh, This will be equivalent to CA, so this will be N sub A. So the concentration of A, if it is an ideal gas, will be equivalent to the partial pressure of A divided by RT. Um, because we know what PA sat, I'm sorry, because we know what the molar ratio is just above our surface, um, PA will be equivalent to P, the total pressure in our system, which is one atmosphere times x a naught. I should probably put knots here just um, to, I'm sorry, this is, sorry about this guys. Um, so uh, just for the sake of uh, being correct, uh, I was deriving c a naught here, not c a bulk. And c a bulk is actually something that we evaluate using a instrument called a hygrometer. What a hygrometer tells us is the relative humidity value, the percent relative humidity value, so scale from 0 to 1, as well as the temperature of the air. And uh, we'll note from uh, the video on psychometric charts, relative humidity is a function of temperature. And remembering the definition of uh, saturation pressure and total pressure and uh, or partial pressure as well as the relative humidity uh, relationship, what we'll see is that the partial pressure of water in the bulk of our fluid divided by the saturation pressure, PA sat, is equal to relative humidity. And it should make intuitive sense because if relative humidity is equal to 1, that means the partial pressure of the water in the bulk of our fluid is at, is the equivalent to the saturation pressure of water. And in this case, any additional water that enters our bulk phase, will we will realize uh, condensation. And uh, because we know relative humidity and saturation pressure is tabulated, from T air, we can evaluate the bulk partial pressure of water in our system. And as we did before, we turn to the ideal gas law to tell us that the uh, bulk concentration of water inside of our uh, bulk phase is equivalent to PA bulk divided by R, the ideal gas constant, times T air. And so now that we have CA bulk, as well as CA, the concentration of water, at the surface of our system, we can find what the concentration boundary layer thickness is, the average concentration boundary layer thickness is, inside of our system, like so. So step six, delta sub C, will be equivalent to CA evaluated at the surface minus CA in the bulk of our fluid, uh, the fluid that's flowing over the flat plate, divided by the concentration profile of water in the Z direction that we found previously. And this allows us to ultimately calculate the concentration boundary layer thickness. 
Now to find what the thermal boundary layer thickness is in our system, in step seven, sorry, in step seven, what we'll do is we will look at the temperature of the air, subtract that from the temperature of the water, and divide this quantity by dt dz, the temperature profile in the z direction that we found previously as well, and uh, this will be equivalent to the thermal boundary layer thickness, the average thermal boundary layer thickness. And it's important to note, um, you can assume a linear relationship. Because we are operating at steady state, Sorry, not the handwriting, but you guys get the gist of it. And finally, what we can do in our system is evaluate an overall mass transfer coefficient corresponding to the velocity of our airstream, like so. So, as we'll recall, the definition of flux is equivalent to a driving force times some kind of coefficient. Uh, and in that case, what it is is a overall mass transfer coefficient, big K sub m times delta CA. We know what delta CA is. Uh, it's equal to CA surface minus CA bulk, or CA naught minus CA bulk. And uh, the difference in concentration, uh, as well as a difference in chemical potential between water in the two phases results in a driving force for mass transfer and then we can solve for the mass transfer, the overall mass transfer coefficient. And so this summarizes how we can find a relationship between temperature and velocity uh, in terms of overall mass transfer coefficients as well as boundary layer thicknesses in flow over a flat plate. And uh, another topic uh, or important theory behind all this is the governing equations and the famous numbers such as the Sherwood number and the Reynolds number and how those play uh, or are taken into account in these calculations. So um, this summarizes kind of a basic experimental setup that we can perform to evaluate thing, quantities such as these and uh, I hope you guys find this useful. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks.